Hey you guys, there's a giveaway that's going on right now that I don't want you to miss out on, so be sure you stay till the end of this episode so I can tell you more about it. But for now, let's get back to the regular episode. Hey you guys, today I'm going to be harvesting some calyx. These are called Roselle. You guys have seen them in some other episodes that I have kind of quickly talked about them. But today we are actually going to harvest these because they are nice and plump and beautifully red. Really love this cranberry red color. This is just a really high nutrition, full of vitamin C, just packed with antioxidants, kind of a uh, not really a fruit, it's a calyx, which means it's actually the kind of like the bottom portion that kind of holds the bud of a flower that would plump up and get really big as the seed inside, the seed pod inside gets big. The calyx, you know, around it outside would also grow with it so it looks like a fruit. But this happens after the flower, you know, after the flower blooms. So Roselle, also known as hibiscus, or hem, hem, hemica, or Jamaican sorrel, even called uh, Florida cranberry. So it's like a mock cranberry because of the beautiful red color and the pectin in it, and it just has that sour punch to it. I really love the way they taste. The leaves are also edible, not just the, the flowers or the calyx. The leaves are edible. The leaves are changing colors because it is a tropical plant. I believe it is a perennial in the tropics, but um, in, Cal in Southern California, they will die back in the winter. But if, actually I'm thinking I would save, I have three of these plants growing this year. I'm thinking of saving one of them and kind of cut it back a little bit and bring them in under grow lights inside the house to see if I can keep it growing uh, or at least alive so that they can once you know it warms up out here they're ready to go and start just get a head start instead of growing them from seed although this thing grows really easily from seed I seeded these late winter or early spring I think I seeded actually late winter here along with some other seeds of other vegetables it really just varies depending on like the environment that the seeds are in and what type of soil and all that sort of stuff but in my experience growing these from seeds it was like the third or the fourth day they started to germinate for me like they were the first to germinate out of all the other kind of vegetables that I I seeded and I started them you know indoor and um, it was pretty easy. It, it didn't require any kind of effort like to keep it under a dome for humidity or anything special like that. And they definitely thrive in full sun, loves the heat. So places like in Las Vegas, the desert area, uh, even like dry heat or more humid heat climate, this plant would do really well. So as you can see that the weather is cooling out here in Southern California, this thing is ready for harvest because the leaves are changing colors, kind of like maple trees, you know, that the leaves will change color and then they would fall. Except if it gets any colder, the leaves not only would fall, but the, the stems would actually, the branches would actually eventually uh, dry out and then the plant would die. So the rain is gonna come tomorrow for us. After that, it's gonna get pretty cold. And so I think I really gotta harvest these today. I was trying to save them till they get really plump and some of the parts were not totally red color they have gotten a lot more red now but just a few days ago i still i was still able to spot some uh, green parts on on the calyx and i'm thinking that could be due to just not getting enough heat enough sun and because even though this side of the wall for me is for for in full sun in the summer especially but you know, nevertheless, it's still getting one side, full sun on one side because the back side is uh, the house, it's the wall. So things do grow a little slower out here, but at the same time, they can sustain a little longer because it also, in that narrow space, we also keep it, uh, it stays a little warm here. This thing responds so well with water. You can see the, you know, the leaves kind of like droop down a little bit, looking a little sad in a really hot day, especially when the water starts to dry out a little bit. So be sure to give it enough moisture to keep it hydrated. Once it droops though, when I've added water, you can see in like within five minutes, it'll just perk back up. It just responses to water and hydration really well. 
and during the time that is fruiting I make sure not fruiting but you know flowering I make sure to consistently water them with at least worm casting tea and even like a seaweed extract that I dilute so if you dilute your natural uh, liquids in water you can water them regularly you can water them more often than like once a month you know you can do it maybe once a week but just lessen that intensity or the dose or the strength of your um, your solution I've seen in flower industry they actually grow these for ornamental purpose make sure if you're growing these in a container give it a really good size because it grows almost like big as a tree as you can see it can right now mine is up to like pushing six feet and it's in a uh, what is this I believe this is a, a 15 gallon pot so I think you ideally would not want to go anywhere under a 10 or a 15 gallon pot it should be at least that size I am tr testing out one in a five gallon pot just because I love to experiment experiment to see how it goes that plant is obviously it's definitely a lot smaller than this one but that's also because I transplanted that one much later so it it started with kind of stunt to growth a little bit being in a tiny pot and then I figured you know winter's coming it has a much shorter growing season it may not get that big anyway so it's in a five gallon pot it's doing amazing though it's small but does not look it, it looks super healthy the leaves are actually has a really dark green almost like a blue hue it's just so gorgeous let me in fact let's take a look at that one this is the third one the last the, the one that I transplanted late and so it is in a five gallon pot you can see it's like yeah it's almost five feet and I'm counting that from the the base of the plant not the container in fact it's small enough that I might just be able to just keep this indoors and see what happens in the winter All right, let's get back to harvesting Usually, you would just harvest the whole thing. To make the jelly, you actually want the pectin from the seed pods. So basically, how do you know when the seeds are, or the calyx are ready to harvest is that when they're nice, red, and plump. So just like this one, I'm going to start harvesting these. Thank you. Ooh. There it is. So just snip it off just like you would with any fruits or if you're like harvesting your tomatoes or something. Isn't this beautiful? It does look like a bud, doesn't it? Or the fruit of the, f the flower. Mm. There are some ants here. I think it was like certain plants, like the other uh, plant back there, one of the branches actually getting some black aphids, so there's some ants there getting at them. Usually with aphids issues, I just you know do a jet spray and spray them off with water if it gets too overwhelming or infested I would just snip those branches off or can do like a light you know a peppermint oil diluted in water kind of a solution well, I'm hoping that there's still enough time that after I harvest these that the buds would continue to develop So one of the easier ways for people that want to remove and just keep, say if you want to save the calyx, only the calyx to dry for tea, you can just snip off this part here. Or you can snip, actually, I don't have a big enough pruning shear, but you can actually cut off a little more this side, the, the end, so that it would, you can peel this off easier. There you see that. You just kind of let me see if I can show you guys. Oh. Yeah, if you cut it big enough, you can just peel it open, just like so. And this is the seed pot. That's still green. It will dry out as it develops then you can plant these seeds let's try this thing oh my goodness it's so crunchy mmm 
Have you guys ever had that tropical fruit called Camarilla? Or Amarilla, sorry, it's called Amarilla. It has that kind of fragrance in the seed pod, but it has a little bit of that gelatinous, like an okra. Not as much as like okra slimy though. Mmm. A little fibrous because, you know, seed pod is more fibrous to protect the seeds. Super crunchy, a little tart. I would got it. I have to say the calyx is more tart than the seed pot. Mm. That was so good. Thank you. <laughs> mm. These things will be really good candy too. Like a dried, dehydrated candy if you mix these with some sort of sweetener, like a sugar cane, sugar glazed or something. Mmm. Okay, let's keep harvesting. Mm. <laughs> That's a big one. See how this one still has some streaks of green in it? But it's so plump. Harvested anyway. This one up here looks kind of exposed. I'm just going to go ahead and remove the, the peel off. As you can see, it is a lot slower to carefully, you know, unwrap and to save the seed pods on the tree, so on, on the plant. All right, so let me keep harvesting and I'll get right back to you guys. Let's see if it'll encourage side branches because I've never actually pruned these before since they grow so fast and didn't seem to be bothered by not pruning, but let's just see. That is all that I'm going to harvest today. I'm going to leave the rest on there because they're just so gorgeous to look at in the garden. And let's just see if there's enough warm days to get these calyx to continue to grow bigger so I can have a bigger harvest. I just really love picking them when they're actually nice and plump. Thank you all so much for joining out here with me today, you guys. I hope I've inspired you to grow some hibiscus of your own next year. If you would like to um, see more videos like this, please like, share, and subscribe to this channel and to follow me on Facebook or Instagram where I do some instant updates of my life and what's going on and what's growing out here that you don't always get to see on this channel. If you would like to support my work, I have the different ways that you can do that and um, in the description box below of everything that I've mentioned in this video will be there as well. And um, you can go check out my website at wendyland.com. Thank you all so much, you guys. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you right back here in the next video. Bye guys. Okay guys, so it's time for the giveaway. I've partnered with Mars Hydro to select one of you guys to receive a SP150 grow light so that you can keep your plants warm and get your winter garden growing indoors. I have been testing out this grow light and I absolutely love it. It's actually, you know, boosts the growth of my plants at least twice the amount and even helped me revive a couple of my really special plants. I have done videos on unboxing, you know, updating how my plants are growing, all that sort of uh, videos. So I'll have you guys check it out. I'll leave the link down, the links down below for you. The way to enter is very simple just of course be subscribed to my channel here and leave a comment down below let me know what you're thinking of growing using this light and if you want to count as being two entries go ahead and go to Instagram and follow me there and Mars Hydro I'll leave the links uh, of those you know Instagram links and uh, basically all the rules of this and uh, this giveaway just below this video. All right, guys, good luck, and I will be picking a winner before Thanksgiving, so be sure to stay tuned for the next updated video for the announcement. Good luck. Stay safe. Bye, guys. <laughs>